Right, welcome. In this video, I want to talk about this strategy. That's the strategy I mostly use uh, in terms of link building. And uh, if you use this strategy, most likely you're 90% uh, of the way there in terms of link building. And most likely you surpass any of your, anyone in your competition by a long shot if you just do this. So let's get started with it. Uh, let's say this is our money site right here. And uh, we all know what money site is right now. Money site is the brand site you want to grow, the site you want to rank on Google and make money with. And Here's exactly what I do now. This again is solely about link building. Don't forget that you need on page and technical SEO as well. The whole goal of this is to build a holistic approach uh, to SEO. So let's get uh, straight to it. Now, first things first, and the, or not the I won't give you the uh, the order in which I build this. By now, you should know that the foundation link should be the first links you build. But yeah, I'll go from left to right. So PBN links. Uh, these are extremely powerful links, right? Uh, PBN stands for Private Blog Network, and again. The ideal PBN, and we have a video solely on this, right? A PBN, again, is a network of different sites, all right? But you own the network, right? This is your network. They do not interlink between each other, right? Don't forget about that. But in the module for the uh, basics of SEO, we have a video solely on what our PBNs are, how to build one, and why they're super valuable. Now, again, PBN links, uh, the ideal PBN is one that is relevant to your niche, right? Ideally, if this is a, for example, a health site here, your money site is health, health in the health niche, sorry, your PBN, so this is your PBN, your private blog network, the network of sites, which includes all of them, these are all health niche based sites, right? All based on one single niche, because the goal here is to build powerful links on niche articles, right? You want power plus relevancy, right? The ideal link is one that's powerful, Plus, plus relevant. Now, it is hard to get these links uh, or expensive to get these links uh, normally. So that's why people build uh, PBN networks, right? That's why people build these networks of sites they own and they can, can control. Because if you want to go out there and get a powerful link, it's affordable. Or you want to go out and build one, it's affordable. Relevant link as well. But when you try to combine the both, both power and relevancy, it's not easy, right? It's not easy and it can be quite costly. That's why people build, again, build these networks of private sites uh, because they can control this and they can make them relevant to any niche they want. And I can most assure you, because I've done this in the past, that if you build a, a PBN network, a, a private blog network around a certain niche, let's call it health, right? The, um, the amount of value this has, it's, it, it's invaluable, right? It has so much value because you have this asset, this monster, you can just link out to your money site with powerful and niche relevant links. Again, powerful because you're the one buying the domains and building them out and choosing, handpicking which ones are the best. Again, we have a, a video solely on that, but this is a, a powerhouse, right? If you're able to build a, a tailored niche PBN and you can forget about all, all these links, all, all about all this, this will give you, get you on page one, even, uh, number of position. Uh, now it, it is a bit more risky if you just focus on PBL links, the idea is to diversify, but just with this one, you can get on page one, right? That's how powerful these are, right? If you can set them up properly, which again, we have solely a video solely on that. Now, uh, yeah, that's the first thing. And that's how, how I would go about uh, from left to right, the types of links I would build to a website. Now you have the classic guest post as well, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, we have a video solely on this on how to acquire guest posts, but essentially, um, Guest posts are links on sites where people accept you guest posting on there, right? Posting an article on there, you write the article for them, and as a payback or as a repay, they allow you to insert a link on the article you just wrote back to your site, right? They get the value of having fresh content on their site. You get the value of having a link from their site to yours. And the good thing about guest posts is you can pick and choose the sites you want to post on because you're the one emailing them and um, wanting to post on, on, on their site, right? Pretty straightforward, guest posts are also super, super powerful and they're less risky than PBN links from PBN networks because you don't own them all. There's no footprint, right? You can choose between different sites, owners, different uh, niches if you like. Uh, it, it, they are quite powerful. And most times the guest post sites, the quality guest post sites do get traffic and in most circumstances, uh, PBN networks or PBNs don't really get as much traffic, right? So with PBNs, you're getting a link that's powerful and relevant. Maybe sometimes, you know, even more powerful and relevant than guest posts still, of course, will depend, but the traffic here, right, is much, much lower than on guest posts, right? Then what I usually do also is press releases. These are great to increase your brand awareness, right? Uh, I spoke about uh, anchor text rotation in the past, how you should do branded, then generic, then only, um, 
uh, exact match keyword and long tail, press releases are the best way to go about generic and even branded, right? Because uh, ideally, there's there's some PR services that allow you to post your site on 400 plus news outlets and some premium ones as well. And what this does is you're, of course, writing someone that something that's newsworthy and that most other networks would like to pick up, right? So it needs to be, it can just be like a generic uh, news, otherwise it'll just get buried. But with press releases, they give your site so much juice. I usually do them once a month, right? And they give you eyeballs, they give you link juice because they're linking from all these authoritative news sources back to your site. Some links are do follow, some links are no follow. But most importantly, they increase brand awareness. And Google, it's always been like this. It's always about brand, right? Your site needs to be the brand, the uh, rec recognized brand for for a certain niche in your in your space in your niche, right? You need to be the go-to, and this ties in with topical authority, which is a topic we'll cover later on. But you need to be the authority in your niche for whatever it is that you're talking about. And press releases are a great way to let Google know that, huh? These guys, this brand talks about this topic, and all these news outlets that we trust as Google are covering it. So they might be doing, they might be doing something good. So press releases are great to give you that extra boost, give you that extra rank, going from position uh, um, four to three, two to one, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. Press releases are a good way to kick, to give it a quick boost because um, they're mostly instantaneous, right? You, in a week, you can have a press release written and put out and re re reap the benefits uh, mostly in one to two weeks. As with this type of links, it sometimes takes a bit longer, but press releases are a great way, I guess, for quote unquote instant results. Right, so it's pretty cool. And if the again the the piece that you wrote is somewhat interesting, you might get some targeted traffic as well, which is always always good. Now the foundation links, I've talked about this before. I won't go over how the anchor text optimization works here because I have a video solely on that. But again, foundation links uh, are your article submissions, uh, free pre-art distribution sites, uh, web 2.0, PDF docs, video sharing links. Again, links anyone can create for free, but you go out and do them, or you pay someone to do it for you. Again, these should be branded as well. Now we move on to the big boys. Uh, guest posts and niche edits are really very powerful, but niche edits are super powerful as well, right? It is one of the most powerful types of links you can get, right? Again, we're looking for powerful and relevancy. They should be manually done and on sites with real traffic. So a niche edit, essentially what it is, and again, I have a video solely on this, is you go out and you find sites that allow you to, uh, that, that allow you to, for them to, that allow you to have essentially links on their site back to yours, right? All these are people linking from their sites to yours, right? Except the PDN links, which are the ones you own. Or I mean, you can pay on for to post, post your links on, on other people's networks. But niche edits, how they differ from guest posts is guest posts, essentially, most times you have them, they have you write the article, they of course proofread it and post it on their site. Niche edits, the article is already written, right? It's already a written article and it just place a link on the article back to your site. Now, why is this? Because niche edits often come from aged posts, right? So if you have a site about whatever that is, niche edits is where they go out, skim through all the posts that have been posted for one, two, three, maybe 10 years ago, find these authoritative pages that are, that are getting traffic, that are super powerful, that have so many links. So now I'll, I'll do like from here. Let's say this is your money site right here. This is the site where you want to post a niche edit to link back to your site. What they do is they have all of these posts posted on their site, right? And they found one or two or more that is getting a lot of links, right? Because it's a page that gets a ton of traffic, a super authoritative page from other sites. So making this page super powerful, again, very, very powerful with a lot of traffic. And they link from this page back to yours. Now, they, of course, cannot rewrite the article. So what they do is in the article, right? They insert a link in a way that, of course, makes sense back to your uh, page. So what you do is essentially on this, uh, there, there's this page on the internet that's getting a lot of traffic, a lot of links, very powerful for years, years, years on end. And all of a sudden they insert a link on their, not, not that page back to your site, which is again, super powerful. And that's why niche edits are often most times more powerful than guest posts. And uh, people often think that they're risky because huh, why would all of a sudden this old page that's getting a lot of traffic and juice and all that get a link to my site? Why my site it looks a bit fishy? It's not fishy because the whole goal of content and these old pages, if they're getting a lot of traffic and links still uh, 10 years later or five years later, you want to update them, right? Google encourages to up, encourages you, sorry, to update old content, right? So if you have a page on your site that's getting a ton of traffic, a ton of links, you have an incentive both through your readers and from Google to update the content, make it relevant for the year that you're in, right? So 
it isn't dangerous. I use them all the time. If I had to say, uh, the most, mostly the most type of links I use are I start with PBNs in terms of numbers. And second, the most, the highest number of links I use are niche edits. Um, of course, foundation links, you get a bunch of links in, in one go, but, um, I invest more time and money in, in PBNs and then niche edits and then uh, guest post PR and then foundation links. That's how I do it. Now, solely with this, I mean, solely with PBN links, you can get go a long, long way. If you combine them with all this, I mean, th there's no stopping you, right? Um, now, if you have, and if you're uh, targeting a bit more competitive niches, you want to make sure you do tier two, right? Tier two link building. What this is essentially, again, we have a video solely on this, is building links to the links you've just built, right? Now, why would you build links, tier two links, for example, to PBN links, right? These are already super powerful links. Why would you want to build links to them, right? Um, it's simple, right? Because it looks natural, right? You, uh, as, for example, just focusing on the PBN network here, on the PBN, sorry, I keep on saying PBN network, just PBN. Uh, as a maintenance thing, you want to make sure that this looks as real as possible. So from time to time, you want to be sending it links to their to, other, to the post, right? So it looks real. So it isn't just a, a stationary thing. So tier link buildings to PBN networks help them make it look, help them look real, sorry. And the link juice that then flows to your PBN network to your money site as a tier two. So from here to here to here is, um, isn't that much, right? So it, it is uh, neglectable here, but uh, the main point for the PBN network at least is to make it look as real as possible. Now to the guest posts, you might want to do tier two link building, right? Um, either for two things, either because you want to uh, boost them a bit, right? Increase their, their authority and their, tr their trust or their just link juice, or because oftentimes guest posts do rank on Google, right? So if you're searching for a certain keyword and your guest posts are ranking down here, it is a super authoritative domain. So it is easier in theory to move around up the rankings. So if you want to make this play and if you have a competitor of yours here, right, their own site, their money site here, but your money site is ranking down here a bit lower. Um, you can build links to your money site, yes, to try and get it up higher, but it will be easier to build links to your guest post to rank it higher than them, right? This is uh, doesn't happen often, but it can happen. So that's why you want to build links to your guest posts, uh, either to rank them a bit higher or to just power them up because the link juice, the links you build here right, to the guest posts will then flow into your money site. Right? So just power, power filling up, power, powering up, sorry. Um, the links you already have. Now, links to press releases, I wouldn't do it, right? Not really necessary. So I, I don't usually do that unless you're in a very, very competitive niche. But then again, I would prefer doing another PR two times a month than just doing tier two link building. Now, um, tier two to foundation links is great because you can easily uh, index some of them. Now, I've talked about this in the past. The goal with the foundation links is not to get them indexed, to get them crawled, um, but you can force index them by building tier two links uh, to these types of links. And tier two links are GSA. It can be PBN links, a, a lower tier network, right? Uh, it could be other foundation links, right? Um, it can be a, a, essentially anything you want in terms of tier two links here. Of course, you would not use a niche edit as a tier two link, right? You wouldn't have a niche edit linking to a foundation link. That would be uh, just a waste of money. Um, then niche edits, again, you can power them up as well, uh, if you like, for the same reason that you power up guest posts. Now, again, if you're in a more, even more competitive niche, you can find ways to uh, stand out, right? By using these uh, five uh, different link building strategies, right? You, which you might have heard of them before, and uh, I'll go over with them one by one, right? EDU, not EDU profile links, right? These are links from websites where you have a profile there, right? A name, a description, Maybe you can post some blog posts there, right? A, a, a link from EDU domain. Most most EDU domains are uh, provided with profile links, right? And the goal here is essentially to increase your domain authority. This isn't DA as in the Moz uh, metric. It's the actual authority of your domain in Google's eyes. And links from EDU sites are great to build a, a trust in Google's eyes because Google looks at links and there's a bunch of links out there. Uh, Google has does put more weight into uh, .edu domains because not everyone can have, can have an edu domain. So inherently Google thinks, huh, if these guys have edu links pointing to their money site, most likely it's because uh, they're an authoritative source because Google trusts edu, edu sites more, right? Google puts more weight and trustworthiness in edu domains. So if you have links from edu domains pointing to your site, these links will give you more trust in Google's eyes. Now, most of these are in fact, um, Profile links. So again, I do recommend you just do naked anchors or branded anchors with this. And uh, yeah, I have a video again solely on this on how to build uh, EDU profile links in the course. So don't worry, you'll uh, find uh, it's somewhat easy to build these types of links. Okay. Then novelty links and these uh, some new pop up every year, uh, but I have three here 
is here tree as an example, and the goal is simply to diversify your link profile, right? Pretty straightforward. So if you don't want to be building more PBNs or more guest posts or more press releases or more of these, right? If you want to diversify, diversify a bit more, sorry, uh, that's where these. I mean, that's where all these come in, but where especially this is where these ones come in because most likely these novelty links your competitors won't have any of them, right? And I'll show you one by one. So here's one from Telegram. Right. This actually this comes actually from the Telegram domain t.me, a very, very powerful domain. And there you go. This is a link. I think this one is uh do follow here. Yeah, this is do follow, a do follow link for from t.me. This is Telegram's short domain, right? Directly pointing to your site with a, a naked angry URL, right? And this is quite easy to create. Just open the app on your phone, create a private channel, uh set all the apps, set the photos, set the name, set the handle, set the description. Put a post and then go to settings and set your uh, your channel as public. Super simple. I don't even think I need to do a tutorial on that. A tutorial on that, sorry, because it's super super simple to do. But not many people know how to do it. Now, then the Amazon link right here. This one is an actual link from Amazon.com, right? Not a subdomain. An actual link from Amazon. If you scroll down here, uh, there you go. Right? There's a link to this person's website, right? So pretty straightforward. Again, these are links that most likely no one in your competitors will have under their belt, right? And the, the whole goal here is that. If this is your site, your money site, and this is your competitor's money site, if you have all the links they have, right, all the links they have, plus some more, right, plus these Amazon links, these Telegram links, these Reddit links that come from these sources that most likely they will not have because they're, they're tricky, not tricky to, to build, but tricky to, because not, not everyone knows about them, right? Not everyone knows you can have an, a link, an actual link from Amazon.com. And by the way, if you need any of these links, you can just go to vetter.com and, and uh, there's people on here that do it for you. Um, then the Reddit one, again, a link from Reddit. This is a bit more straightforward. This links to this website, right? The vending machine uh, website, right? So these types of links, again, the goal here of these novelty links is to build links to diversify your link profile, right? To go the extra mile, right? Then q and links, these are links from sites, for example, like Quora, right? Where you go out and answer uh, questions and then leave links on uh, on the answers to your site. Again, I have a video solely, solely on Quora and how it works and how you should leverage it because it's super, super powerful because not only are you getting, are you getting links and link juice, but you're also getting organic and targeted traffic to your site, right? Super, super important. And you can leverage Q&A sites like Quora and others. For example, if you're in the development niche, you can leverage Substack and a bunch of others to send these links, these types of links and traffic to your site. Again, we have a video solely on this, so don't worry. Uh, I'll go in detail on how this works. Then Google Stacking, we also have a video solely on this on how you can do it, how it works, why you should do it. These are links uh, directly from Google, right? Helps you diversify link portfolio, helps you diversify your Anchor profile, and gives you trustworthy links directly from Google, right? There's no better link than a link from Google. Um, so yeah, it's a, a great thing to have. These are free to create, so why not create them? Again, building links, it's all about, <coughs> excuse me, mass quantity and quality links, and links from Google are uh, top tier types of links, right? Then finally, entity stacking, stacking, sorry, I also have a video solely on this. This is where you get links from Microsoft Cloud, Amazon, AWS, uh, all these IBM Cloud, Google Cloud, um, links not from their, their root domain. So this one isn't from Amazon, it's from their cloud, right? AWS, but these are all powerful links that do index, right? So again, another powerful and disruptive way to uh, give it the extra extra mile on your on your link building uh, tactics. And again, I have a video solely on this and we have a video solely on this too. So don't worry, we'll go in depth on how this works uh, later on. Or if you watch the course either the other way around, uh, you might as, well, might as well, might have already watched them, right? So this alone should help you get the number one position, right? If you have the on-page somewhat decent and technical SEO somewhat decent, if you just do this, right, you'll get to page one, right? Pretty straightforward, of course. You'll need different quantities of links. Quantities of links already depend on, depend on your niche, but uh, you get the point. Now, uh, do these all? It's all good, but how, uh, sorry. But what really matters is this work. Yes, it works. This is an example of uh, a US-based uh, keyword, right? Under thousand search volume a month. Uh, we ranked uh, start on sixty nine, ranked on page two. Um, we were at 10, now we're twelve. This is a, a bit old, but it does work. Look at this movement right here, right? This works. All these keywords moved up, right? This works because it is an abnormal amount of links, right? It is an abnormal amount of high powerful links built in a way that makes sense. Taking into account the anchor text rules that I, I've covered in the past, right? Taking into account these percentages that I've uh, talked about in the past, not just for the foundation links, but for all these types of links. And yeah, the reality is, reality story is that it does work because it is again an abnormal amount of links. And most people don't go this, uh, don't do as much 
in terms of link building, right? So do this and you, you, you'll most likely see similar results as these ones. Of course, it will depend on your niche. It will depend on how your on-page and technical SEO are done. But yeah, that's it. Long one. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.